radio in my bag here and I'm about to go ride my bike to the local pond and try out my vertical antenna. I've just arrived at the local pond and the idea is to be able to operate portable. I rode here on my bike and there's my pack and uh, in a second I'm going to show you the wonderful view that I've got. So this is my view. I'm going to toss a antenna up in a tree and sit by this small little pond and see if I can make a contact on a Morse code uh, CW. So for the first step I've got this golf ball with the eyelet through it and then just some kite kite string and I'm going to toss this up in a tree. Got this idea from uh, QRP school uh, YouTube channel and so I'm going to toss it up into uh, one of those tree branches. All right, this is almost exactly what I wanted. Um, you probably can't see the string but hopefully you can see the golf ball swinging there and it's just hanging from that uh, little twig there but that's enough to support this antenna so we're going to put it up. My goal was to make as simple and cheap of an antenna as possible. So I have this little connector here that just breaks it out, breaks out wires, and I didn't even solder anything. I just screwed the wires in there. 17 foot wire into the one that connects to the center conductor, and then four counterpoises uh, of 10 feet connected to the other. And then I just have it on this kite winder so that it's really easy to manage. It really is just that $1 connector. Four, the yellow wires are four 10 foot counterpoise slash uh, radials. And then the black wire is a little thicker because it's supposed to give you higher bandwidth, but I'm not sure it matters. And it's what's just up there hanging by the tree. All right, this seems to be about as good as I'm able to get it. Um, actually, what does that say, 1.36? Um, it's, it's, it's below 1.5 in most places, but not as good as it was last time I came. All right, I just plugged it in. Pretty happy with this. Um, I haven't plugged in my key or anything yet, but uh, the, the, the noise floor is pretty low, as you can see down in the uh, S1 range, and then I'm um, picking up a station at like S5 or S4 and able to, to uh, make them out really good. I just checked the reverse beacon network and I'm definitely getting out. Um, I am operating from this vertical. So there's my antenna all zoomed up and this is what I see while I'm operating. All right, so I had sprinkling so I had to put everything back up in the bag and then I just covered it up with this. Um, looks like it's about to clear back up. But it's not supposed to rain today, at least not for another couple hours. But if I'm going to have to sit here and wait it out, at least I get this view. I don't know where the microphone is, so I'm trying to let y'all hear. I'm finishing up a QSO with Ellen from BC, wherever that is. All right, so I got one in the logbook, um, VA7HA. Uh, this is Alan. Um, and he lives near Vancouver, so here's the map. Let me make this full screen. So that's where he's at in Vancouver. And then if we zoom out, we can see him in relation to me. So this is why I think that amateur radio is just amazing. So I'm using 30 watts, I mean, just the a third of the power of a normal light bulb before the LED light bulbs came out. And I'm basically just flashing that uh, that light bulb, um, a third of the power of one of those, on this simple little $1 wire antenna hanging from a tree and able to have a really clear, great conversation with him from 2,000 miles away. Um, that's just amazing. So a little commentary. Look at that signal on the S meter and listen. Right. This is kind of hard to do with one hand, but I was just going to make some commentary about how different it is when you're in a low noise situation because 
like that signals uh, most of the time now it's going over five but um it was hovering around three and it was not just audible but like i was having to turn the volume down um and i, I would have definitely been able to copy that versus at home i've got a solid s7 noise most of the time at least s5 always and so here i can just make solid copy of an s3 so it makes a ton of difference so i just finished my second qso here by the lake this time with Larry A A H six A X. Um, it's getting a little bit darker here, and this time with Larry. Let me try to hold this steady. So this is Larry. This is who I talked to. We were having a great cue. So um, he was able to copy me. I think just fine. He was responding to what I was saying. He said I was five three nine. Uh, he was five five nine, and this is where he's at in Maryland. And we were, we, uh, everything was going great, and then uh, another station jumped right on top of us. So I think I'm going to pack it up now. Maybe not. What? So, so that's amazing. See, look, check that out. I can copy that, and the, it's not even registering on the S meter. At home, um, I've got a. a I've got the noise all the way up to the five or the seven and so that I wouldn't have even been able to notice that this is happening but yet I can copy it here by the pond. All right well it's getting late I got everything packed up in my backpack and it's time to head home. Oh my gosh my hair. So um, everything's packed up in my backpack um, leaving the lake and about to take off on the bike. Um, Ready to go. It's hard to complain about that. One contact from 2,000 miles away uh, that gave me a 599 and another one that gave me a 539 from 600 miles away. All right, and now I'm back home and I am going to charge my batteries with this charger. So with these batteries, I've standardized on these plugs. They're the XT60s and this charger probably cost 30 or $40. Um, I think $30. And I cannot type, plug it in with one hand, but let me try. Okay, there we go. Um, and then this is the screen that it shows by default. And then I'm going to plug this guy in. And you have to plug in both the power one and then also this uh, one that helps it measure each cell individually. So let me plug those in real quick. And so here we go. It's showing me that it's gone down from 16.7 to 15.41 volts. And each one of the cells there shows that it's got 3.8 volts. And so what we do is we want to charge it. I have it set up to where it only charges a maximum of two amps, and that's just so that uh, um, really low risk of charging these guys. And then I also set it to 4.18 volts instead of 4.2 volts. And so we go down here to start. Come on. And it's at 51%. So, uh, or wait, that's 47. So I used about half of one of these 4,000 milliamp hour battery packs to play on 30 watts with CW by the lake for uh, about two hours. But I was uh, having QSOs almost the whole time. 